plumberparts.co.uk. Honest reviews and advice. Boom, and welcome to today's plumberparts.co.uk video. Way I'm on site today. This is a site that we're doing, seven houses that we've been building, which has been great fun. And I'm gonna give you a quick look today all about underfloor heating, okay? So, as you may see around us, we've got Celotex on the walls. We're actually in a basement here, probably about three and a half meters underground, which kind of scares me. So let's firstly, number one, have a look at the basic components of an underfloor heating system. Boom. So firstly, as you can see, we've got ecotherm absolutely everywhere. It's 100 mil ecotherm on here. And then what we do is we actually lay out our underfloor heating just like this. Very, very easy indeed. So you have your pipes. Each one of them gets stapled down by a small staple just like so. And today where you're going to be putting them, we have a very nice company here that actually makes you a nice little map for you to figure out. So it's actually really, really easy to do, especially if you hold it the right way up like that. Next, you go into the darkness of this place. So there we go, that's a bit better. So now, right, we can have a little quick look at this manifold here. We have our thermostatic control on here, our pump that circulates water through our manifold flow and then back to our return. And then also we've got our gauges on each one of here to basically balance the system like we would a heating system. Because obviously if they're not balanced, water will quite happily come up through here from the flow, go down this first loop and then back again and not be forced to go around these two loops here. As you can see, we've got a couple of air vents on here as well that we'll be using later on to purge the system and also we've got our in and outlets for our boiler here and here. Once we've got the underfloor heating down on here we've got the screeders coming in and they're going to screed a 75 millimeter screed around the outside. Now the principle is is you use all these pipes that are zigzagging around with nice hot water through them to actually warm that solid slab of concrete up and that will stay warm through the day and it gives a much more ambient temperature there's no cold spots in the house or anything but the thing is you don't want to be losing that heat into the wall or down through the floor. Now we don't have to worry about the floor because we've already got Celotex down but the thing is around the wall we don't want to lose that so what we do is we get this lovely sticky stuff here sticky back stuff and we run that all the way around the wall we cut it around our little bits there and then I run around the room and basically that insulates the slab then from giving out its heat into the walls so once you've got all that stuff going around there and you're pretty much ready to go and you've looked at your little map, you basically get 120 meters of this roll or whatever the stipulated part is for that bit of underfloor heating system. You look at your map and then you start laying it out according to your map. On your own, this can be a pig of a job, basically. So I hope you enjoy. And there'll be a little bit that we miss out over there because as usual on site, they suddenly decided to put a spiral staircase in and decided to tell me last. Otherwise I would put my pipes under it and they'd have drilled through them. A lot of you guys know what that's like when people do that, change the goalposts, etc. I have a little box of pre made up staples ready to start going. I'm going to put my headphones in and I'll see you later. Hold tight. Right then, so as you can see, that's a complete nightmare to do. Uh, we've got our flow coming out here. We've got our coil here. So what we're gonna do is turn this pipe up roughly so we think give ourselves a little bit of slack as well. And we've got a small piece here for this all to go on. So there's our manifold there. Let's go back to the shed and I'll draw you a bit of a diagram so you get an idea about how these actually work. See you in a sec. Whoa! I bet you're wondering what this man is doing 
in a Christmas jumper. Right, so in the grand scheme of things, these systems have the usual boiler with a pump. Basically, you've got to see them as a zone in the heating system. So let's say we've got our pump with a two port valve going up to our coil in our hot water tank with a return going back to the boiler. Then we have, say, uh, a zone valve for the radiators upstairs in a house. Blah, 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 and they go back to the boiler like that. And then we have another zone that has its own valve and its own small jockey pump, which will make water go around the underfloor heating system. And that is going to be the bit that we're going to talk about on this very next, very, very high tech bit of whiteboard. Right, so underfloor heating systems don't just supply burning hot water from the boiler and run it through the underfloor coil. That's the first thing you have to realize. So they have a thing called a thermostatic mixing valve. Okay, so let's have a look at the basic components of an floor heating system. Now these can be different for different kinds of manifolds or different manufacturers but this is the usual way of doing it okay. So we'll have our flow coming from the boiler and then that will go into our manifold here with our different pipes going off to our different coils which I'll talk to you about in a sec. Then they will go around the room and the coil and they will come back up these different ways like so. Now this return water which is cooler because it's given off its heat into the underfloor can either do one or two things. It can go straight back to the boiler okay which means what's happening is, is you're getting hot water coming in and cooler water going straight back out to be heated or as the temperature of the underfloor heating water comes up it can be diverted up here into our pump or jockey pump and then back into the underfloor heating system. Now the idea of this is you have burning hot water coming in. Say you've just started your heating system up okay you can have burning hot water coming in or really nice warm water probably about 60 degrees come into your underfloor heating system go around the coil under the floor then back up and straight off to the boiler to be reheated and brought back again. As the system gets up to temperature so say if you've got a screeded floor a lot of the time the temperature you only really want to be at about 45 degrees or maybe a little bit more depending. So as the underfloor heating temperature rises and the slab starts to get warm or the underfloor itself starts to get warm, instead of demanding new hot water to come into the system and be heated up and instead of sending it back that way it actually sends back its cooled water up here and it just starts to circulate around here and almost become its own system. Now the advantages of that are mean that you have an automated set temperature for your underfloor heating system and that's really really good. Now there are a couple of other components you have to look at when you're looking into underfloor heating systems. Firstly most of them have an AAV on the flow manifold and on the return manifold. Bearing in mind these don't have to be this way around. A lot often the components on underfloor ink system manifold can be laid out in different ways. So you'll have an AAV on each side so you can vent it out and then on either of these two you'll have our balancing valve heads along here and then you'll have your actual valve actuators okay. The valve actuator talks to the thermostat in the room okay that you're trying to heat with the underfloor heating. Sometimes you can have a manifold like this that does two rooms. So say you've got two rooms like that there, okay? You've got a thermostat for one here and a thermostat for one there. If this one calls for heat, it'll actually lift up this actuator here and lift the valve up and start allowing flow through, which means hot water can come through into the flow manifold and go around that room and start warming it up. But this one isn't calling, therefore these stay shut and that room doesn't get warm. Basically it's like a very closely controlled zone. Balancing knobs at the top basically work just like balancing a heating system. If you had all these open, so they were all demanding, your flow would come in here and it's more likely to go down this first port and that first loop and then back again. A lot of the time you'll come across a small domestic property where they've got say a manifold that is just a couple of zones okay. That doesn't mean to say that just because we've got four pipes coming in and out it means that this is supplying four rooms. A lot of the time a room can be so large that you need different loops to actually distribute an even temperature. For example, say we've got a massive room, ignore this, there's nothing to do with it, we've got a big room like this and you just had one coil going around it. By the time it got to here it'd be freezing cold and it would take forever for the whole floor to heat up. So you have your one coil going around it here and then going back, then you have another coil going around it here and then going back, then another coil going around it here and then going back, which means then that it heats up the floor a lot more evenly and a lot quicker. That is basically a very, very brief overview about how underfloor heating manifolds work. This is not going to be the only video we do on underfloor heating, so please subscribe to our videos and you'll get updates automatically through YouTube about when those videos come up. We do upload videos all the time. We've got Ask the Plumber. If you need any more help or any more information, please visit our website at plumberparts.co.uk or you could email us directly at at info at plumberparts.co.uk. As ever, really importantly, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. 
post and retweet loads of photos that you people send in of specifically plumbing disasters. As ever, if you need any more help, any more information, ask us a question. If you think we've left anything out, let us know. And we'll see you in our next video, which could be an Ask the Plumber. As ever, if you want to ask the plumber, just contact us direct and we'll see if we can answer your question in our next video. So remember people, there's one thing I gotta do out there, and that is... <laughs>